Okay, well, welcome to Glory and Grace Live. This is Dr. Patrick Obin. Always a joy to share the word of the Lord with you. Quite an exciting topic to share with you today. Just realized the week has been, the prophetic has been on my heart the entire week, just sharing the um, mysteries of God's word regarding prophecy and the prophetic for the New Testament. Well, a couple of things. First, quite exciting. This week, um, we'll kick off live webinar sessions that could be more interactive. And um, it's been a long, 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 long wait of postponing it, time constraints. I think it's, uh, I believe it's something the Lord really wants me to get into. So we're not going to wait anymore. This Saturday, 9 a.m., which will be 2 p.m. GMT time, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time, we're going to be live. It's going to be, it's the format is going to be a little different. It's still going to be more teaching, obviously. However, it's going to be more interactive. We're going to have time to pray. We're going to have time to pray with you. We're going to have time to listen to your questions, feedback at the same time, answer your question, to be able to interact with you live. And it's through these sessions, we'll be able to have you know more practical teachings, especially when it comes to studying the Bible. I really had that in mind to show you step by step how I study the scriptures, to show you how biblical exegesis can be done by you at home. You don't need to be a theologian in profession to do that. So these are the things we'll be doing during this seminar, during these um, sessions, and um, quite, quite, quite really excited about that. Second, so the webinar sessions, because of Zoom, the the Zoom restrictions, the account that we have, a hundred live participants only. So it's going to be restrictive. The first 100, you know, um, would be allowed live. We're going to do our best to stream it. Lots of technology getting into that. But so use the link below if you haven't done so. I haven't checked to see how many spots have been filled or are left. But use the link below as soon as you can. Praise the Lord. And secondly, our live Bible study sessions on Thursday are going to be constricted a little bit, somewhere about 25, 30 minutes, um, just to gain more time, get ready for Saturday. Uh, so if you're ready, let's get started. The mysteries of the prophetic in the New Testament. Joel chapter 2, verse number 28. And it shall come to pass afterward, that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. What a, what a blessed promise. That is no longer a promise. It is now a reality. That it shall come to pass afterward, that I, the Lord, will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Flesh here doesn't mean bodies. I've discussed this multiple times. It doesn't mean people's flesh. No. Flesh means humanity, human beings. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. So... What is prophecy, what is different about prophecy in the New Testament as opposed to the, the Old Testament? How can you function in the prophetic? All of that is really based on this promise and its realities in the New Testament. I'm going to, be, I'm going to just reiterate some of the things I've been sharing on the devotionals. And I really pray that you have captured and understood that. It will change your life, I'm telling you. It will change your perception of the Spirit of God in you. It will change how God relates with you. It will, it will change your perception of, you know, how God can use you to influence the lives of other people. It will change a lot about your intimacy with the Holy Spirit. I really want you to, if you haven't, you know, read the devotionals, please, 
take a moment after this, just read them in my spend the entire weekend reading and listen again and again and again to this teaching. I have taught maybe once or twice about the prophetic before. And when I say prophetic, I want you to remove from your mind the idea of major prophets you see. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm going to share a series of what I call twos and threes with you. It's going to be much more of a summarization of some of the things I've been sharing to really drill them into you. So a series of twos, two this, two this, two this, and three that, three that about prophecy. Hallelujah. The number one, the first two is the distinction between the prophetic in the Old Testament and the New Testament. The distinction, what has changed from the Old Testament to the New Testament? The first two, old and new. It says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. The Jew in those days, the normal Israelite in those days, did not have the spirit of God, number one. The prophet was the one who had the ear to hear God, the eyes to see God, and the mouth to declare. In other words, the prophet was the eye and the mouth that represented God among the people. That's the way the normal Israelite lived. They knew that if they had to hear what God is saying, they go to the prophet. If they had to know the will of God, they go to the prophet. If they want to do anything and, you know, you know, know what God is saying about the nation, they go to the prophet. That is the way the, prof the prophetic was in the Old Testament. The, the normal Israelite did not have the Spirit of God. So you can imagine when Joel gave this prophecy, that the days are coming, the Spirit of God will no longer rest on a few major prophets or a few prophets among you. I'm going to put my spirit. What makes those prophets prophets? I will take it and pour it on every single one of you. I want you to picture the, the, the complete paradox that would have created in the mind of the ordinary Jew and the prophets. God was saying that his people... All of them will be prophets. And the reason why is because the Spirit of God will be given to every single one of them. I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining this, probably another session. One of the greatest errors of the prophetic today, listen to me very carefully, one of the biggest errors that the church today in most part, is making about the prophetic, is trying to bring the prophetic of the Old Testament into the New Testament. What does that mean? It is trying to take the role of the prophet in the Old Testament and import it into the New Testament. Big error. We're going to spend a lot of time on that. But why, why is that important? I just explained to you one, for example, one instance. The prophet was the voice of God. He was the, the one who could hear God, who could see God. The Jew had no personal direct contact with God. He was the prophet. And you see that how it's prevalent in the churches today, especially churches that believe in the prophetic or that have a major prophet or the man of God is a prophet. You find that, that the ordinary Christian tries to relate with God like they did in the Christ, or believers did, or the people of God did in the Old Testament. They think the prophet is the mediator between them and God. Big error. I'm telling you, very big error. At time's sake, I'll not get to that. That's the first two. Understanding the difference between the prophetic in the Old and the New Testament. That being said, let me go to the next the three, three, I'm summarizing, three different dimensions of the prophetic in the New Testament. The first dimension is the one we are all familiar with. This is what I'm talking about here. Is that because the Spirit of God has been given to the entire body of Christ, the whole body of Christ. Listen to me. The day you receive Christ, that is the day you receive the Spirit of God. Hear me very well. The day you received Christ, that was the day you received the Spirit of God. There is a distinct and second experience with the Holy Spirit. 
that traditionally has been called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's different from the born again experience. I'm reading a, a lot, you know, just reading commentaries and the confusion about that. You know, I'm studying, really studying this thing because it's so confusing. I've started with, you know, spirit, soul, and body. Once um, the book is coming out from that, and then I'll get to the Holy Spirit. Just dispelling some of the confusion. So get that. So the Spirit of God was given to you the day you, that's what makes you a child of God. There's no question about that. You don't have the Spirit of God, you're not a child of God. So don't make a mistake. Don't make the mistake we made before of, you know, thinking that the Spirit of God comes upon you only when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost. That's a separate encounter with the Spirit. No, there is a separate encounter after being born again. It's a baptism. It's almost the baptism of the presence and power of God to a different degree and different dimension. But that doesn't mean that is when you receive the Holy Spirit. He came into you the day you got born again. What a blessing. And because of that, every believer is a prophet. This is it right here. Your, your young men, are, they shall prophesy. Every believer has the capacity to prophesy. Because what makes the prophet a prophet is the Spirit of God. And I've told you, what is prophecy? The ability of a human being to get knowledge of the will of God, knowledge of the mind of God, to receive the word of God, and that ability to speak it forth. You know what God is saying and you declare it. That is what prophecy is. So by virtue of the Spirit of God in you, every single one of us, we have that capacity to operate in the prophetic. You can hear God and you can speak His word. Hallelujah. First dimension. Second dimension is what is called the gift of prophecy. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we learn of the gift of prophecy. What is the gift of prophecy? Is it different from the prophecy of every believer? No, it is not. I know this is, this is I'm telling you, when the Lord began opening my eyes to understand this thing, so, so wonderful. Listen, let me use an example. Let me talk about faith. Does every believer have faith? Yes, a measure of faith was given to every one of us. That's what makes you a Christian. Because you have faith in Jesus. So you have faith. But there is something called the gift of faith. What is that gift of faith? Is it a different kind of faith? No, it is not. The gifts of the Spirit, they are simply a higher measure, a higher grace of operating in the same abilities. What that means is faith, the faith that comes like the gift of faith we know of Smith Wigglesworth, for example. That guy had some crazy faith. That is the gift of faith. It is the ability to operate in faith in a higher dimension. It is not a different kind of faith. It is the same faith. It is just grace to operate in a higher dimension. That's really what the gifts of the Spirit are. For example, the gift of discernment. It's not like a special kind of discernment. No, it is simply grace to operate in discernment in a higher dimension. So the gift of prophecy is the same prophecy every believer can, can prophesy or is the same prophetic ability in every believer that has been lifted up in a higher dimension and given to a man or a woman so that they can use that to bless other Christians in a higher degree. That is really what the gift of prophecy is. So amongst all the believers, you see the pyramid, like three pyramids, right? There is, oh, let me not say, there's like one pyramid with three rows. The first row, just imagine that is a broad row. It has all believers are prophets. Then there is a second row. It, it contracts a little bit. Not every believer has this gift of prophecy. So there are a few of us. Amongst all of us Christians, there are some of us that God has given this gift. Now, amongst all of us still, there is a higher dimension. It is called the office of a prophet. 
apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. Do you know what that is? Offices to govern the church. That office of a prophet, it is a grace that God gives to a man or a woman to operate in an office. An office, meaning it's like the apostle, like the pastor. It's an office with a higher grace that comes with a higher dimension of operating in the prophetic, usually for directing the entire body of Christ, a whole group of people. It has higher dimensions of the word being revealed. It has higher dimensions of grace that a man can speak with wisdom and power. That's why you, can, you see the miraculous happening. You can see gifts of the word of knowledge operating in higher dimensions. And let me, let me emphasize this. Is it a different kind of prophecy? I tell you, no. It is the same prophecy, the same prophetic spirit that is operating in that office. Office means it is grace to govern. It is grace to lead the entire body of Christ. Hallelujah. And don't make the error. In either of these three, don't make the, even the office of a prophet. It is not the same office the prophet occupied in the Old Testament. Let me give you a classic example. Prophets in the Old Testament, look, just imagine Isaiah. He, he spoke so many things about Jesus. Do you know that that guy spoke without an error? I'm telling you. This, like Joel, these guys were giving grace to speak the word of God without a single error. When they spoke, it was God speaking perfectly. That, you know what that is called? It's called grace. They spoke the scriptures. So there was a grace upon them to be error free. They spoke the scriptures. Because they had, the, they had this grace, God was preparing the scriptures for us. That is not the same grace on prophets today. We have a higher dimension, but that grace is not there. I wish believers would understand it. No matter the office of a prophet, even today, prophets are liable to error. Listen what I said. I said today. Whether it's major or minor prophet, or the big prophet or the small prophet, listen. The grace that these prophets of the Old Testament had to speak scriptures, is not the same grace given to us today. Not that they were better. No, it's just grace. God wanted them to put the scriptures together. That's the reason why even a major prophet can make errors. And a lot of times believers don't know this. Hallelujah. So three dimensions of the prophetic in the New Testament. Hallelujah. Let me just continue, you know, series of threes and twos. Today is really contracting everything, putting together. So you can really understand what the prophetic is in the New Testament. I think last year, or if not last, maybe 2018, I did a live Bible study on three, four, three ways that false prophecy manifest, or three types of prophetic errors, three, or three types of false prophecy. Let me just tie it to what I just said. Three types of false prophecy. The first type of false prophecy are the false prophets who have no relation with God whatsoever. You know, that was, it's not, they don't even know God. God did not send them. God doesn't even know what he are talking about. Well, meaning, doesn't have, wasn't the one who sent them because he knew, knows everything. But he doesn't, he doesn't, in fact, they are coming there and prophesying. He's looking at them like, where is this one coming from? Even today, we still have those false prophets. There are people who are using witchcraft. I hear it a lot in my nation, Cameroon. And each time I hear it, those are the things each time I share my my heart just breaks inside. And the Lord will tell me, the reason why they are like that is because the church is not mature. Because that's the reason why false prophets are in the church devouring the children of God. I, each time I talk about it, it reminds me of my ministry and what God has asked me to do. So it gets me almost emotional. 
But these are false prophets who they don't, God doesn't, did not send them. They have nothing to do with God. They are in the body of Christ. They have many true Christians sometimes following them because they see so-called miracles. They see so-called word of knowledge and they are running after them for breakthroughs. False prophets, false prophecy. That is out of question for us. I don't, I'm not getting into details about that. So number one type of false prophecy coming from something that is completely out of God. Number two, it now gets tricky. It now comes to the body of Christ. The second kind of false prophecy, talk about three types of false prophecy, is when a man of God or when a woman of God or when a child of God and um, a believer receives something in his own heart. Who has the Spirit of God? He has the Spirit of God. You know how the Spirit of God speaks to us? That's what I'll be teaching on, 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 on Saturday and you really understand this. To, to, to train you to receive from the Spirit of God. That's why it's a training because it's, uh, it's liable to error. We have to get trained. When if somebody who has the Spirit of God like you, right? You're listening to me. The Spirit of God is inside you. And you are receiving messages from the Spirit of God. Sometimes you know it's the Spirit, sometimes you don't know. When a child of God receives um, a message and he thinks it is from the Spirit of God, whereas in truth it is not, can that happen? Yes, it happens many times. In other words, you receive a message. It might even be a dream for those who walk with dreams or visions or if you hear God's word in your heart. So you receive it and you're not so sure, is this God or not? Or maybe you thought it is God, but it is not God. What does that tell you? The flesh and the spirit, the two of them can still operate in us at the same time. In other words, the second type of false prophecy is somebody receives a message and thinks it is from the spirit, whereas it is not. It is from his flesh. It is from him. He gives a message, especially word of knowledge today. I'm telling you, and I'm telling you, and even giving you warning at the same time. Not every word of knowledge should be taken as though it is from the mouth of God. Not that the person is intentionally wanting to deceive you. No. The prophet who is giving the message might not even know that it is not from the Spirit of God. Because he thinks it is from God, because that's the way God speaks to him. Second type of false prophecy. That is a false prophecy. In other words, giving word of knowledge, that seemed to be coming from God, but it is not. Very important. The third kind of false prophecy, this one gets even more tricky. If, you know, as you grow in your relationship with the Spirit, then you begin to understand these things. It is when, oh, hallelujah, oh, glory to God. Three types of false prophecy. It is when a prophet, a true prophet, a child of God, for example, actually receives a message from God. So the first part is over. That first error for the child of God that the message wasn't coming from God is over. He receives, he or she receives a message from God, like a dream or an impression or whatever it is. And then listen to me. Whenever, oh dear Lord, whenever God speaks, you have to interpret and understand what he is saying. So God can show a man a vision. And that man misinterprets the meaning of that vision. Then, oh, hallelujah. God can, sometimes he doesn't speak to us very clearly like that. He might just bring a vision to us. For example, he gives us a dream. And then we have to understand the meaning of the dream. And sometimes false prophecies arise. Not because the message is not from the Spirit, but because the prophet misinterpreted the meaning of the message. There is a classic example of a major prophet in Nigeria, right? He gave a, what we call, false prophecy. And do you know what that was? He received the message from God, but he interpreted it wrongly. And everywhere internet was all over the place, he's a false prophet. No, that doesn't make him a false prophet. Just like when your pastor teaches a wrong teaching in the, on Sunday, he doesn't know. That doesn't make him a false teacher. 
Let me let me let me actually let me say this. Five years ago, for example, five, ten years ago, growing up in the faith, there were things I understood based on my understanding of scripture at that time, the way I was brought up, for example, body, soul, and spirit, as I have been teaching lately. I, I used to teach that man is a spirit. Man is a spirit. He just simply lives in the body and he has the soul as a tool. That's what I've heard all my life. But lately I've come and studied this thing more, read, I've, in fact, I'm still doing it. I discovered that no, that thing is not true. It is a Pentecostal thing trying to explain our experiences. But that is not the testimony of Scripture. Now, five, ten years ago, that's, if I was preaching, that's what I would be preaching. Well, do you say I'm a fake false teacher? Well, it's false teaching, but it doesn't make me a false teacher. Why? Because it is my under it's not as if I'm trying to deceive you. That is my understanding of the scripture. And we have to really understand this. I'm telling you, even prophets today, I've told you, we don't have that grace that God gave the writers of the scripture. The prophet can still make an error. Can I still make an error today? No, and you might not like this. The answer is yes. I can still make an error today. I can still teach something which is wrong. But am I doing it intentionally? No. My knowledge of God is increasing. There are some things I might not have understood clearly, which is going to be better up tomorrow. That's a way. You have to really understand that the man of God, the minister of God is a vessel. You have to distinguish between the man and God, especially in our African communities. It is as if when a man of God speaks, it is coming from the mouth of God. What an error. I'm telling you, if we don't change that mentality, not that we shouldn't respect our ministers, no. It's to realize that the minister is a man. He's a woman. And you have to hear the minister and know what is the minister, what is God. And that is a distinction that many Christians are unable to make. They receive what is coming from the man's own understanding and they are unable to tell if this is God or not. Hallelujah. Three types of prophetic errors. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Threes, threes, and twos. Let me, let me just find out very quickly. The two arms of the prophetic. You know, all of these are in the devotional. So there's going to be, the next five minutes or so, I'll be rounding up and we're closing. The two arms of the prophetic. How do you operate in the prophetic as a Christian? I told you prophecy is receiving and releasing. Receiving knowledge from God and releasing it. Receiving the word of God and releasing it. That's the two operating arms of prophecy. It is knowledge and utterance. The two arms of prophecy. So you have to grow in this. You have to learn. How to, for example, what I'm doing now, do you know what that is? That is called prophecy. I know some of you are like, really? No. I've received from the Lord and I'm declaring it to you. That is why the Bible says in the New Testament prophecy is for edification, exhortation, and comfort. It's not like saying I'm giving you a word of knowledge. No, that's not all. It's the ability to understand the will of God, knowledge, and to declare it. So there's these two arms of prophecy, the operation of prophecy. So if you want to grow in the prophetic in your life, you have to train yourself how to receive the word of God. You have to know how God speaks to you in different ways. And then you have to learn how to speak the word of God. I've taught multiple times about that. Let me now take the first part, the receiving part, knowledge part. The devotional for tomorrow is discussing the two perceptive arms of receiving knowledge from God. Hallelujah. That is the two arms of receiving from God. They are the eyes and the ears. In the Old Testament, the prophets of old, they either saw a vision or they heard from God. So God is telling us those are the two ways the word of God comes to us. So the knowledge arm of the word comes either by seeing or by hearing. So you have to develop those two. I've taught multiple times what it means to see. And I've also taken how it means to hear God. So the word of God comes to you by the eyes and by the ears. Hallelujah. Now let's go to the second operational arm, which is utterance. To, uh, the, the devotional for today, was discussing the two, two purposes of prophetic utterance. In other words, what are we seeking to do when we speak the word of God? And I went into details in that devotional. 
I've told you two operational arms, knowledge and utterance. I've taken knowledge. Knowledge comes by the eyes and by the ears. Now I'm in utterance. When I speak, what am I seeking to do? There are two purposes of declaring the word of God. The first is, when I might receive knowledge about God or knowledge about other human beings or knowledge of the things of the earth. And my purpose for speaking that knowledge is to reveal something about God or something about men. You see? So the first purpose of prophetic utterance is the revelation of knowledge. It might be knowledge about a man. Jesus came to the woman at the well and revealed something about her. She was shocked. That's knowledge. Jesus, you know, demonstrated the, the gift of the word of knowledge to us multiple times. Even today, it's so beautiful to watch. I love watching it just, it operates to, in me in a certain degree. But I love watching those that God is operating in them in higher degree. There's a man of God, um, Prophet Hubert Angel in, um, in, in, in Britain. I just love this guy. He has the prophetic grace. You really see God operating. I love to watch. He's a great man of God. There, there are others who have existed before. That, so this declaring the word of knowledge, that is one manifestation. The word of wisdom. What is the word of wisdom? You know what I'm doing right now? That is the word of wisdom. The utterance of the word of wisdom is the wisdom of God I'm declaring to you. My understanding of his will. I have seen his will. I've heard his will. And I'm making it known to you. That is the word of wisdom. The declaration of God's wisdom. What about teaching? I'm teaching now, right? I'm teaching you. That is prophecy. Preaching of the word of God is prophecy. So we have to understand prophecy in its entirety. And this is what God says that the, the purpose of the prophetic is for edification, exhortation, and comfort of the church. I'm teaching you, you are getting strengthened, you are getting encouraged. For example, if I find out, if I know something about you that you're going through and I reveal it to you by the word of knowledge, you become encouraged. So the first purpose of the prophetic utterance is for exhortation, um, edification, and comfort, revealing knowledge. The second purpose of the prophetic arm is power manifestation. That is, you are speaking not to reveal, but to command the change. Whenever you say, I'm declaring the word of the Lord, you, you, you disease in my body, I command you to go. Do you know what you are doing? That is prophecy. I declare over my future by the spirit of the living God. I am filled with the Holy Ghost. Do you know what you are doing? You are prophesying. Mountain in the name of Jesus, I command you to be moved. That is prophecy. I pray that you really catch this. Ezekiel came to dry bones. The Lord says, prophesy unto these dry bones. Speak. Mark eleven twenty three. 23, Jesus gave us what it takes to speak the words that are coming from the Spirit of God. I told you, to speak power, it takes the word, the Spirit of God and faith. Hallelujah. Two arms of utterance. How beautiful I have dissected this. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to stop here. And I pray that you, you have really, if you can really grasp everything I've spoken to you today, you would understand prophecy in a, in a very profound way. And not only that, you will begin to cooperate with the Spirit of God like you've never done before. Lord, I just pray for everyone that is watching right now and everyone that's going to watch this recording. I pray by the Spirit of the living God. That there's going to be a higher dimension of the prophetic. The two arms of the prophetic operating in our lives. That will walk by the Spirit like never before. And let the name of the Lord our God alone be exalted. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of the living God. God bless you. So excited. Don't, don't forget. Saturday, we are going to be live from 9 a.m. Central Time. That's 2 p.m. GMT. I'll see you then. Keep your questions. We're going to be, it's going to be a moment of importation. Today is going to be teaching. Uh, Saturday is going to be a moment of importation. I'll see you then. God bless you. Bye-bye.